I think, more of the new Nax Rambus cards. But he still has some of the good old Wild Pyromancer, Holy Smite, Circle of Healing, Power Word, Shield clears with the coin that he can definitely do. Um, so it should be a good matchup, and I'm excited to get things underway. Yeah. Looks like the players are ready, so let's go into game number one, guys, between Kyukin and Moss. This is the best of five. And this is to continue in the tournament. Single elimination, guys, so trying to stay alive. It's, it's great to actually see Mind Control back. Uh, you know, obviously back in the day, Mind Control is one of those cards uh, a lot of people complained about, just given um, how just really the effects of it and how much it was at the time. And, um, you know, it's been, pretty much been gone from the metagame. You know, priests haven't really been that prevalent in the metagame for a long time outside of, uh, you know, just really a Maz and Zed a lot and even Era playing it. But mind control for, for sure has been gone for a long time. And now that we're, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown in the game, we're trying to, you know, mind control is back. And it's quite powerful too when we see it late game and making just those, those huge uh, game turning type of plays. Oh yeah, definitely. So, oh, it looks like uh, might be a little out of order. Apparently, Amaz had two mana before Koyuki did. It's probably just a little bit of a, a fast speed up there. So we'll make sure to catch up yeah. accordingly. Um, yeah, I think you bring up good points. The metagame has slowed down a significant amount, so cards like Mind Control can see play. I mean, that's partially why legendaries like uh, Karen and Sylvanas are just as dominant as they are in control matchups, because people aren't afraid as much of the combo burst potential, considering that Sludge Belcher buys you a lot of time. All right, and we see the injured Blade Master Circle Healing. Now, you can't really get too much better of a start for a Maz there. Um, the injured blade master, you know, full health is is one of the key minions for for the priest deck in, in the mid game, and usually they take control of the game at that point. Um, he has a belcher actually to support this, but he has two thought steals, and thought steal has been a subject worth mentioning recently, given that Amaz has in the past said that thought steal is, in his opinion, the best card in the game, and then we had Brian Kibler recently saying that thought steal was a trash card. So, what are your thoughts on it, Rodan? I mean, it's a, it's a trash card until it becomes the best card in the game. That's, <laughs> like, my philosophy on it. Um, okay. Like, I rarely get the opportunity to... Uh, by the way, the Shield Slam was really big, which we yeah, kind of anticipated huge. happening. Um, yeah. I, it's, like the situ it's like the thing where it can get really useless cards. Like, if he gets Shield Slam here with his Thought Steal, then yeah. it's just going to be useless. But if he gets Legendaries, like this Ragnaros, like Ragnaros? that just appeared... <laughs> It's the best card oh in the game. God. So, I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. If it's a Moz, okay, you know what? Let me rephrase this. <laughs> I'm adding a, a corollary. <laughs> if it's a Moz, it's the best card in the game. When I'm playing it, it's the of worst course. card in the game. That's He's right. got Fire War Axe for the Acolyte. <laughs> it's like What's going on here? Hey, he can have Fire War Axe and Thought Steal again and get Ragan. Oh, oh okay, my so he gets God, a, this is Sylvanas insane. and Faceless. You know, he took out what? Sylvanas and Faceless from his deck. So he How might as well just put this? it back in his deck, you know? Thanks. It's cool. Oh my god, that's crazy. And okay, so take a look at Kiyuki's hand. He's got three weapons. Oh my gosh. But he doesn't have any of his big threats quite yet, but he's got quite a bit of removal here. Got the brawl now, too, so... Alright, we might see a bunch of value plays, value removing plays coming up here soon. Doesn't have an execute quite yet, though. Jam man, what does he play what did I here? say? I said, Nimsh is the guy who paved the way for Amaz. He played <laughs> right before Amaz, and now he prophesied of a greater coming, and the man is here. He thought stole Sylvanas, Faces, and Ragnaros, three of the most powerful cards in control matchups. Like, Faces is your extra way to win the control matchup. Sylvanas is just a legendary killer, and you have Ragnaros, which is like another win condition. This is crazy. <laughs> All right. Back to All the right, game, so, though. Um, yeah. You have to kind of be careful, because like you said, there are lots of removal options, but Koyuki has such a clunky hand. Like, he's got the triple weapon we mentioned, which sometimes just... You can't push it out all within a very short time period. It's going to take at least six turns, um, or more, depends on if you want to wait, before you can kind of get full effect. So Koyuki's in kind of an awkward position where he doesn't want to use his second shield slam or other cards of removal very quickly. And he needs to kind of figure out a way to make sure that his board doesn't get overpowered by yeah. stronger health minions that the priest can leverage their hero power on. Okay, so he breaks out Death Bite. Death Bite is usually a good answer to the to the uh, the you know the the 
the top of the, the sledge belcher, but not in this case, man. That one's at 3.7. He's going to have to use some of the belcher, too, to remove it. And, and okay, an Akonai Soul Praise here, too. It's going to be a pretty good answer to the belcher. Yeah, I mean, again, fighting for value. Taking out and using the Fiery War Axe um, in tandem to effectively remove. This is this is a warrior mirror match we're watching. It's so weird seeing a priest with a fiery war axe. I don't think I can get like, used to that. You don't even you don't even hear his audio file play that often, right? Like what does Anduin say when he attacks? He says by the uh, light, and then he's like, well, what? You don't really ever attack with a weapon unless you're like mind controlling Tyrion and getting his weapon or something. Sounds like a Jeopardy, Jeopardy Reno or Jeopardy Jeopardy Reno? Yeah, Jeopardy Reno question coming up here, Milkman. <laughs> Milk can jot that down. Close, close, Chan man. I'll give yeah. you a hundred points for that. Oh, thank, thank you, Jeopardy. man. Thank you. <laughs> Jeopardy Reno, man. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's see what Kiki's gonna play here. Okay. Hmm. The, mm -hmm. He really wants yeah. to get past this little one too, so he can smack the Alcanai Soul Priest and kill it off. That represents too much of a threat. But yeah. what do you use to get past it? Are you gonna? Are you really willing to use like a spellbreaker or something else? I don't uh, think so. That feels really bad. Um, I mean, most a lot of priests actually do run Sylvanas and things like that. So you got to you got to think that Kyuki's gonna save the the spellbreaker for something more impactful like that. Um, so this turn is going to be, yeah, I mean, is you take the value play and just like not do that much, or, oh, what is he doing? Oh, he's like, actually, I think he's going to proc the... Oh, he's popping it with uh, the death battle okay. trigger. He's going to okay. kill off like this it. one. All right. Wow. So I this Alcanai Soul is traded for full death spite. Yeah, for, for like two swings, right? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Full death fight. Mm, so Amaz is really far ahead. Like I, I can't begin to emphasize like how mm -hmm. he's um he's far ahead in the in the card count. Like he's really making sure his opponent's playing inefficiently. He's thought stolen some really powerful cards. He's in the kind of a awkward position where it's still not as strong to just drop something like Ragnos this early, but he's got yeah. two. And he's got answers to it as well. Like, if his opponent faces it or plays his own Ragnaros, he still has responses. Yeah, Kiyuki's going to need a crazy value brawl uh, where he's going to be killing at least two very high-value minions here uh, because you're right, he's way behind here. And, you know, Amaz has that mind control too, which is, you know, that that's... <laughs> It's not even just a removal, it's a removal and a, a you know, like a, a minion play at the same time, right? Like a giant minion play, so it's, it's crazy, that's like the biggest swing card you can get in the game. Yeah. There's no try Cleric's just solely to wow. take out the last charge of the weapon. He doesn't want an easy execute for his opponent to have yeah. something to do. But um, now we're coming up on a turn where most likely a big legendary is coming down here. And that's two. That's two death bites gone for Kiyuki, and that's... Again, that's it's a type of playmaking card that you like to build up armor with, or maybe you know, draw an extra card with, or proc your dramas with. And he doesn't have those plays anymore. Oh, oh, okay. base, it's okay. Base, that's not bad for Hyuki. It's kind of okay considering that this Lothar will die anyways. You're more willing. This is the first Ragnaros, the first of two, oh, and wow. um, I, I think he's okay losing it. At least he shredded the armor too, so he can't just simply armor up and then shield slam it. Well, he's not going to, I mean, Kayuki doesn't, again, doesn't have Wonder. a great value play to remove this this rag unless he wants to take some damage. Priest doesn't have a lot of burst outside of, you know, like a Holy Light or even just, I mean, rag is usually the burst, right, for, for a priest. So he could go down, you know, to oh, below 15 and be okay. Uh, that's kind of what he's looking at right now. The Fireworks would be the the best value play to, to remove this, but he's not going to be able to play much behind it, like an Armorsmith maybe, or... Yeah, there we go. Wow, Rag hit face twice. So I think <laughs> yeah. he's done a pretty good way to think job. It. Yeah. Oh, man. 16 damage, not too bad for 8 mana. But, right. you know, as painful as it was for Kyuki, it's the kind of play that he needed to even get a little bit closer to even right now. I have no time for games. He's gonna use Sylvanas to just remove the board. This, he's just gonna. I mean, he's got so much fuel. Why well, like, is there silence? There's a silence. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's true. Forgot about Spellbreaker. Yeah, it's still gonna get a straight trade there, which is not bad for him still. What about um, what about suiciding your board and playing Yasera? Do you feel like that's too risky? Because your opponent uh, might have mind turn control. Turn ten, I think it's too risky. I mean, given that there there's a chance that he could be running mind control. Uh, I think Kyuki probably knows there's a chance uh, he's running mind control, and the game's just over. I think if that happens, he has no answer for Yasera after that. Yeah, all's well. I think you bring up a pretty good point. All right, just going to silence uh, Savannah so that Savannah gets as little value as possible. Still going to get a straight up five five trade, I think, or maybe not actually. Shield slam. Wow. Okay. So the loss is really exhausting. All kinds of removal, and now he's got. Does he have a way to clear with Pyromancer? I think so. If he just Pyromancer Holy Novas with Shadow Word Death. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. The Maz is definitely going to be knowing the combos here. Let's see. Anything with Akanai that he can do? I mean, he'd take a little bit of damage from Holy Nova, but it's... Nah, not, not, nothing nothing any better. Yeah, I think that's the that's probably the play. If you want to remove the board completely. Uh, the question is whether you want to save Shadow Word Death. You still know that there's an Alex and... Right. His own rag and, and Gromish is you can't you usually don't aren't able to use it on Gromish because they'll just proc it themselves right and take the damage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when they play it. So it's generally not on Gromish unless it's like some desperate play by the, the the warrior just to remove something. Yep. Not to mention that Pyromancer would actually die to a fiery war axe, and then yeah. you use your best answer to Ragnaros, which is Shadow Word Death. You have to rely on Faceless, and that's not always good guarantee. So it could be a tricky situation where you don't want to use your removal here as much as Priest does often seek for a board clear. Is there an alternative play that we're not seeing? Maybe with something Shadow Madness. Shadow Madness, the only thing you could take is the Armor Smith. Right? He could soften that. He could... Okay, all right. Hmm, okay. That's an interesting play. Yeah, you know, just doesn't want to give up. up. Um, yeah. He doesn't want to give a shadow word death, and this way, Holy Nova still kind of removes. Yeah, he's just setting up for again, just some more value, just depending on whatever he throws down here, just future future play, right? From the, I mean, he's setting up uh, just damage from the Holy Nova for a future play from Kyuki here, but the future play could be an armor smith, so. Ah, uh, I feel like Yasera's down now. If you don't Yasera now. When are you going to ever use Sarah? Yeah, I agree. But then you, what Maz is going to do, he's going to draw mind control. I mean, he can even faceless this. He can faceless this in Holy Nova. Right, but he's going to draw mind control. <laughs> he's going to draw mind control. <laughs> <laughs> One could dream. Actually, faceless? Oh, no, that, that, would be, that wouldn't be that great of a play here. Okay. All right, Holy Nova. The only thing you're afraid of is your opponent constantly being able to swing tempo with, like, Dream. If he keeps getting Dream and then, oh. like, he saps your, your Sarah effectively and then you never get a chance to, like, play it based off tempo alone, then, um, second Yasera tends to be at a disadvantage. Okay, Yasera awakens. Uh, pretty good draw from Amaz there. Um, oh, yeah. I think looking, yeah, I think he's, you know, you're looking for a potential burst here to take down the warrior, but the shield shield block's gonna help him stay out of that range. Uh, he definitely got the worst of the the two dream card draws there in the nightmare. It's um, not good. Maybe <laughs> not good in this situation. Uh, I mean, there is a play where you can deny your opponent to attack by putting your okay, cool. yeah uh, your ghoul and nightmare, so that way you kind of set up a huge wall. You say you can't push through. But then, of course, you're like, well, what if you play? What if you just play Dream and then you wasted your Nightmare card? It's kind of a situational give or take, but there are ways to kind of utilize this. He can go for a removal on his opponent, Yasera, too. He still gets oh, one my. card from it. Yeah, he gets one card from it. Right. Because it lasts till your, your, your next turn, right? So. Okay, so we got Emerald Drake. That's definitely, I think. Preferred, <laughs> except for when your opponent has two Shadow Word Deaths in his hand. Wow. You know your Sarah's dead next turn. I don't need to remove it here. So yeah, 
So even though it's 9-11, you don't need to kill it off whatsoever. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I think you... Do you just board clear and then play um, Lotheb? Just Ysera Awakens and Lotheb? I feel like that might be your best course of action here. Yeah, I like that. And you're not within burst range, and you shut down the ability of like an easy execute, so still a little bit tough for Koyuki to pull out of this. Mm -hmm. yeah, By the way, we just got finished through the thought steals. So Amas has yet to draw his actual legendaries, like his Sylvanas and his Cairn. <laughs> like these are the cards that he's just played with because he got his And his mind death. control too. Yeah, he hasn't even gotten to his mind control. So yeah, he's still very, very far ahead here. And I think Yuki knows that too. He still has that brawl. It could be some miracle brawl here where he plays all those cards. And all those cards in, in the process of BMing Kiyuki and <laughs> able to pull it out. Try some kind of dream scenario like that. All right, okay. well, now is the time where Amaz feels like he can use Shadow or Death a little liberally, play the Cabal Shadow Priest, and maybe crush him. Right. We even wait, get value, why not? <laughs> it's just three damage versus four. It's not that much of a difference. Yeah. What? Face is Manipulator? That's just one of the worst cards you can draw here. Oh, my yeah, Sylvanas. Whoa. No, that's not good. Sylvanas doesn't give you be. enough pressure to kill. Well, if he plays Sylvanas... Yeah, but he could Faceless and Brawl and... Oh, yeah. That's bad. Maybe take his own Sylvanas, like if Amaz plays Sylvanas here, <laughs> I mean, that, right, right. that'd be the best case for him. No, you're absolutely oh, correct with that. Right. Oh, Koyuki, he plays Ragnaros, and he needs this to hit one of the minions. Oh, but then, actually, Amaz can steal know, it with actually. Um, Shadow of Death. So this is actually game right here, because Amaz is able to take it and finally get his own Sylvanas value. I have no time for games. Yep, and that's going to be it. Finishing with the signature move. <laughs> he took two Ragnaroses from Koyuki's deck. Are we surprised? Like, I mean, he, come he on. He took one from Thought Steel, and then he stole his second one. <laughs> this guy's a thief. Are you, you really surprised, man? When it comes to anything Ragnaros, it is possible with 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 uh, uh, Amaz. And players are ready, guys. Going to go into game number two between Maz and Koyuki, best of five here. And Koyuki trying to tie the series up. The light shall bring victory. I have no idea how Amaz stays so calm when he takes those cards and Thoth Steel and just like nods and curls his lips like, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and it's going to happen again to a degree. You're going to get Thought Steel, most likely. These games often end in fatigue. Paladin versus um, Priest is a very long matchup. So Thought Steel will become a factor. In fact, that's one of the basic win conditions of Priest. But it's, it is like, like condition is the emphasis here because you have to get actually like an opportunity to win if you draw cards that don't really have effect like say he takes some um, like a zombie chow or something that's that's not going to be helpful yeah absolutely if zombie chow in this particular matchup is just not very good i mean if anything you you're kind of setting up for a potential cleric heal there for a, for a card draw but zombie shell is necessary against things like shaman and, and other classes that you got to fight off those those early minions that we see that are really popular and another circle of healing injured blade master on turn three uh oh. incredibly fortunate for amaz because again that play is so powerful but he does have an aldor yeah, an aldor will definitely be able to alleviate this that's, that's very nice yep. for, for Fuki. Well, but he draws a way to start getting cards. So, mm -hmm. I mean, now Amaz basically has this injured Blade Master as a, as a cleanup card. Like, you just basically keep killing hero powers. Um, now he's kind of introduced with an interesting choice of does he want to try and draw an extra card, but his cleric will die anyways, um, versus using like a card like Holy Smite. But both accomplish the same thing. So. In fact, I think passing might accomplish the same exact goal anyways. Whether or not you want to fish for a car with power word shield. You think passing, really? Uh... Well, either way, you lose your cleric. Yeah. So I, I yeah, mean... Either. Yeah. yeah. 
it's it's about using the mana now as opposed to later. Like if you would pass if you feel like you can use the cards later, like with Pyromancer. As like a priest player, you don't feel like it's as obvious to use the cards because like Holy Smite synergizes with Pyromancer, so you might want to save it for later. Versus using it now is because you don't feel like you have the opportunity always to use your mana. All right, so Zombie Chow still on the board. Uh, he's got Cabal Shadow Priest next turn, and Maz does, so if he wants to steal it or not. But I don't know if he actually wants to. Oh, maybe he will steal it, and then he can actually use it as damage against Kuyuki. Uh, Kuyuki's got, looking at some plays. He does have the Humility Encoder that he can use on a single target removal at any point. Not on the Soul Priest, though. Soul Priest doesn't seem like a um, great target for that. But right now, the Soul Priest is really set up to... To get a you know just get a lot of value in the next turn, so he, it looks like he is opting for yeah yeah why he's not for go play for the on it yeah there it is because yeah. I mean, he plays the Belcher, Belcher gets just gets destroyed right? yeah exactly so good play there by Kiyuki and Maz you know really looking at the same play again looking at the Cabal Shadow Priest but instead of doing damage to Kiyuki it's actually going to heal Kiyuki this time around but still worth taking it. Maybe. I mean, Koyuki might ignore it. Say he, like, taunts up and just pushes for damage, but I would yeah. imagine he kills off this zombie chow. It's okay. This game is not going to be a race. Um, no, There might be an not. opportunity to, but as the priest player, you're always afraid of um, the quality consecration, so you're going to be playing it slow. And then Paladin just always plays so. Like, it's just very <laughs> rare that you're trying to pressure. Unless you're able to leverage four attack minions, and make priests um, just like have an impossible way to deal with your creatures. So, you know, Ko Koyuki is going to be the one taking it slow too. So there's no rush. Yeah, like you said, I mean, the, both these classes, they just they don't have any burst ability to them. You know, it's it's all about just getting the most value out of every single play that you make. Uh, not much of a tempo tempo struggle here or anything like that. Imagine Kel'Thuzad right. in each of the, any either of these decks. Ah, I li I like Kel'Thuzad in Priest yeah. when I play um the Tempo Death Rattle because that deck is just insane. But it's it's more of a like it really is a win more card like an insane win more card. Yeah, so it I, is. I took it out for consistency. Mm -hmm. Agreed, man. Came to the same conclusion too. All right, looks like Earthen Ring. All right, it's nice, and he's got one Earthen Ring in this in this deck, and this is pretty much what it's for. It's just like nice flexibility in that card, being able to to heal your minions or even just give yourself just that tiny bit of health if you're playing against, say, like a hunter or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Dark Cult, this comes down. Antelope Death, really strong turn there from Maz, and yeah. all right, I've seen this minion on minion battling. That's uh, I think that's what Blizzard likes to see. <laughs> a lot of people like this kind of aspect of combat math and making sure that yeah, like everything absolutely. lines up. I think Koyuki is really happy that his opponent doesn't have Wild Pyromancer and uh, Holy Nova because that would have completely took his, part, his board apart. So I think he also got some good information on what his opponent has or doesn't have rather. Um, so it's just like a process of elimination. You might feel like these turns play themselves in a sense where like, okay, well, obviously pick the good trades, don't overextend and make sure that I'm playing the proper responses like you yeah. know the battle cry goes in the appropriate minion but you're also gathering information that allows you to make calculations of when it's safe to drop certain legendary cards so yeah like people who are watching and they want to learn from like these players just pay attention to all this small little information gathering that they're doing absolutely and both of these guys again I mean this is their class they've played the heck out of this class and understand many of the scenarios and uh, you know, we're getting a chance to see that. Kiyuki, you know, he still hasn't drawn the equality yet. Hasn't gotten a chance to to really have the option to, or he doesn't have it available to him right now. So he might actually have to use lay hands pretty soon here to even dig for it. Uh, it's just nice to have it in your pocket so that you can, you know, try to play play around it, play let your opponent play into it. Wow, that is, is a like really a imposing um, load there, but five seven. Hmm, Koyuki's introduced with a very interesting choice here, though. Do you want to go for more cards and slow play it to draw into equality? Or is it time to... No, you can't drop your Sarah. This board's way too strong. You can't draw. I mean, if you drop if you drop your Sarah and he has my control, it's like over. Uh, unless you're holding an equality and he's not, right? So that's the kind of thing I was talking about with equality. It's like if you have an equality in hand, it, it just allows you to 
you know, be be flexible with some of your your plays and know that you have an answer in case something does go wrong. But right now, it's like, what what choices well, does he have outside of lay hands here to dig? Well, the problem with lay on hands is that it actually does nothing on the board versus Yasira does something. Like your your opponent's creatures will most likely get trade into it. Yeah. Um, and the, the thing is, if you are if you let Akunai Soul Breeze go, the board is just going to build oh. stronger against you. Well, he pulled something great. That's exactly what he needed. When you're behind on the board, throw down Sylvanas. Oh, but yeah, but what if your opponent has Sylvanas? Mm, like, to steal yeah, your own Sylvanas, and then you're in trouble. Oh, true. That, that could be really bad, true. Against a priest, particularly. <laughs> Priests seem to always make that play. This is quite the pickle. Sylvanas is one of the better cards that Kuyuki could have drawn. So yeah, it ends good up thing working out he... great for him. Yeah. Yeah. He can't remove either. I mean, he can't trade either of these minions completely <laughs> into Sylvanas here. So, um... hey Chan, you want to know something yeah. crazy? Uh oh, <laughs> what? If you, um... If Sylvanas takes Akunai Soul Priest, Lay on Hand becomes an 8 damage nuke. Oh gosh, that's so Like, true. you use Lay on Hands on your opponent, and it's like, deal 8 damage, draw 3 cards. Dude, Akunai Soul Priest should do something to your dudes, man. They should make them like, shadow recruits or something that do 2 damage instead, or something like that. It's not even like Amaz is in a position where he can push for damage. Paladin's on 30 health, so he might just have to ignore Sylvanas. But like this push for damage is pretty That's inconsequential. Scary. Yeah. His best bet is Sylvanas trades into the 5-7 and then steals it. But no, he guarantees that he takes the Akunai. Yeah. And then he's going to use the 8 damage nuke on his opponent and draw 3 cards. This is such a sick play. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my, I have never seen that. Have you seen that before? Using lay hands like that? I think that's yeah, the first Yeah, I, I have because I've thought stolen it before, but let me tell you, oh, wow. it's um, it's very rare for the priest to have it done to him, <laughs> right? I know. Like, wait, I, who's thought stealing whose card now? I've never seen, I mean, I've never been able to do eight damage to my opponent with lay hands. Yeah, that's awesome. That is definitely great. Okay, so great plays there, and Kiyuki draws, you know, a lot of the cards. He still doesn't have an equality, but, you know, Amaz is running low in his cards right now, and Kiyuki is drawing into all of his power cards. Uh, and True Silvers, man, two of them. Oh, there's the mind control. There's the well, mind control. I mean, mind control might not ever get played here. Um, 15 mana, that's quite hilarious. Although, hey, now Kiyuki might feel like dropping a legendary because a shadow word death was used, so maybe Tyrion could seal the deal. Oh, never mind. Uh, I think he's going to be real patient with this. I think he knows that there's always that chance. Sure, sure. Okay, True Silver uh, going to be trying to clean things up here. Amaz does have a Harrison Jones, but playing just the Harrison is going to leave him with half of just five mana, and I'm not sure what else he can do with five mana here. Mm. Well, maybe That's Sludge Belcher? Delay it? Sludge Belcher would delay it. I Wait, let's see. You can remove then his silver. opponent just chews silver and pushes and kills you anyway. Like He doesn't know that Koiki holds a second chew silver, so by all means, Amaz is actually dead. No matter what I think, but Amaz's hope here is most likely to Harrison Jones, or you just mind control and do the same exact thing. But the, no, the accomplishment's about the same. Yeah. And you remove the one I one, and he can't push through this this turn, right? Oh yeah, you're right. Oh wait, yeah. oh, there's does a quality, quality change it. I think does a quality mm, change it at all? No, I don't think so. I th oh, well, actually, with a, qual a quality, no, I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't because it, it kills your soul priest. To... Right. Okay. Let me think. Well, hey, mind control's out of the way. That was an oversight. I forgot that you can just mind control sludge belcher, of course. Well, uh, no matter what, Kuyuki's Let most likely think. gonna cut through this sludge belcher, but I think it's a battle of which card do you drop afterward, whether it's Tyrion or it's Ysera. 
Lost. Lost you oh, there for a second. It up. Okay. Sorry about that. Lost you for a second. Oh, he puts down Tyrion. Nice. Okay. Oh, he doesn't do anything to Belcher? Really? Hmm. Okay. Well, Amaz can draw some cards can... with Circle of Healing. And he can also, if he can get second um, Shadow Word Death. Yeah, Shadow Word Death. That could be devastating, <laughs> actually. I think that's the, that's the play. So then um, you get Shadow yeah, Word Death, play. and then do you Sylvanas? Or do you, no, you Harrison Jones. Shadow? Whoa, you have Shadow Madness? Wait, shadow wait. madness. So then shadow madness like activates the zombie chow because it like does the five damage. It's in your possession. Whoa, whoa. let's see. Uh, it's still don't. You're not gonna kill him this turn, but no. But like, yeah, you, you do five damage to him instead of healing you, him. You protect. <laughs> you effectively protect. If you sh um pyromancer, this actually steal the procs the, the bubble, way. and then you actually can push through and do some damage and heal power down. Oh my goodness, what a series of plays in a Wow, that is That's amazing. Kind of oh, you better hurry. Relevant. He's gotta hurry. Nope. Oh, he's still got the 1-2 there. Okay, so he's still saved from the, the Ashbringer. Oh mm, my gosh. But then the quality Pyromancer actually ends yeah, this game. So a Paris cool puzzle, Woo! but um... Wow, uh, that was kind of almost a comeback here. Yeah, that was... That was Awfully tight at the end, surprisingly, uh, from from Amaz there. But that's the priest, man. The priest ends up drawing drawing into these crazy. Where there's always these. All right. Well, the uh, players are ready, so we're gonna go into game number three, guys, between Amaz and Kiyuki. Yeah. So he's gonna take a lead in this series. And all right, this is the key. This could be the key moment right here. Just how how both decks wow. start. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay, but well, both players get at least uh, the early minions. You were saying Pally, you know, just might or, you know, doesn't sound like it's going to a lot of times get get that quick start, but those are the minions that you kind of want to start with. Yep. And it's important that he's going first too because Zombie Chow gets the first say to Undertaker versus your Zombie Chow mm. in response to a turn 1 Undertaker could get buffed and have no effect. So Koyuki just with this card alone is going to force Amaz in an awkward position. Yep, it's true. Amaz has to decide... Probably which two drop the... Well, maybe even just the... Well, I mean, he's got a choice to pass, or he can play a two drop here. So we'll see if he plays the... Uh... Ooh, double zombie chow, too. Uh, Maz is already pass. pretty far behind here. Just yeah. with this alone. Now, not because of the pressure, but because his minions won't actually do anything. Yeah, well, he can actually buff the Undertaker at this point, and but they won't remove one of the zombie childs very elegantly. They're gonna have to swing twice at it. Um, best case. Hmm. And Kyuki has an Earthen Ring play behind this too, so. I wonder if Omaz is more is okay with losing Mad Scientist and then getting a trap, so that way maybe he can like get Snake Trap. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind about that yeah. earthen ring. It's actually turn two for Kiki after this, right? Because he used the coin there. Yeah. Okay. So I, I like Mad Scientist oh, yeah, over Haunted Creeper first. here. Kiki went turn three. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, the Mad Scientist before that is definitely better. It is turn three. I'm crazy. I'm just crazy. Uh, we all have our moments, Jim. Don't worry. <laughs> um, now, like Koyuki's got such a comfortable start that uh, it's going to be kind of tricky for a Maz to pull back. And for every, t like, the longer the game goes, the more the Paladin's favored, but even more so than usual because of the cards that are lacking, like high main. Like, a Maz doesn't have high main, so his late game scaling is shrunken by a considerable margin. He's going to be relying on a lot of burst damage. And this board position is, like, the most power paramount thing of this matchup because you're trying to snowball the entire game. Consecration is a huge draw from Koyuki. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's just going to clear this board. Um, you know, Trap is going to go up, so he at least has that. Snake Trap? He just hit face too, right? So it's Snake Trap for sure. And like you said, it's like a timer. Amaz has is like more, you know, this deck is on a timer. It's meant to be super fast and snowball by this point already. 
So um, already behind the gun at this point. Hasn't done any damage to the Paladin yet. Not even a single point of damage yet. So got to say that he's, you know, he's definitely ahead, in, or at least in, the be in better shape right now. Oh yeah, and now you just peacekeeper. I mean, Koyuki is starting to line everything up beautifully. Now the stake trap is kind of annoying, but why bother even proccing it when you could use stamp exactly. and go to the next turn? Okay, Lotha's a good draw for him. Might have to force him to actually proc the snake trap. And another consecrate by Koyuki. So even if the snake trap does proc, he's gonna have an answer to the majority of this board just with that spell. Oh, but Lothab, I forget about Lothab, but Lothab, Lothab's going to actually at least delay it for a turn. Right. And on quality draw now. Shoot. Crazy answers. Shoot indeed, man. Like, how are you supposed <laughs> to deal with all this? Um, Shoot, man. What's so annoying is, again, the snake trap, because you don't want to pop it early, so you're going to have to ignore it. And this effectively makes the Divine Shield worthless, so Amaz getting a lot of work just based off the knowledge that this secret is the snake trap. Because now the Houndmaster isn't completely useless here. Yeah, and he, he might actually use Unleash here just to use a kill command on that. Uh, but, you know, using a kill command is five damage. That's not to the guy to, to the Paladin's face either. And this deck is all about, you know, uh, quick damage. But look, okay, so he's not going to do that. He's going to end up... Wow, he's just going to huh. use a kill command. Wow. I mean, Just he's trying him. to bait Koyuki again into attacking, but oh, Koyuki doesn't necessarily have to. It is tempting to consecrate, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you consecrate, then you know you have to you have to play a certain way, right? The rest of the way, uh, the rest of the game, because you know you're going to be out of out of the ability to, to clear like a snake trap or even an unleash. Buzzer mm -hmm. type of play. Uh, but yeah, so he goes and pops it. You know, now he can just remove it. He might as well just get rid of it. And... Wow. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna keep the consecrate. Just uh, he's able to deal with half of this board with the the Kodo. So might might as well just you know, take this route and, and keep that in your pocket for a potentially more dangerous play here from the hunter. But Amaz, he's just running out of damage. It's like, does he have enough damage to, to kill him? I. Well, you can always unleash back into the game. So Amaz is keeping that. Like that's yeah. why that's why he didn't unleash the previous turn because he says this is probably my way to rubber band. Um, he... I think Hunter's Mark is a little mo more expendable considering this is your second kill command. Yeah. But then. Like, Guardian of Kings actually puts things slightly out of range for kill commands, so I think you'd rather use um, that now and save second Hunter's Mark if you're afraid of that card. Okay, yeah, sure. Still got the Leroy combo if he wants, you know, just with wow. the leash, but... Oh. Koyuki yeah. has um, Pyromancer. Like, like, Koyuki has answers to, I feel like, anything. Like, damage, he's got eight heal on his hand. Any kind of minion, threatening minion, which, you know, for Amaz, he doesn't have any giant minions like that. That a quality is just going to be crazy, um, cost effective against. So that's kind of why I'm just wondering if he even has enough damage uh, left in his hand. He's going to have to get a lot of damage from his bow. That's what I'm, what I'm thinking. He's got two bows. Mm. He needs Down to um, one kill. Yeah. He needs so. cards. That's what he needs. He's just, yeah. he's not utilizing his mana whatsoever. For two turns, it was, he's lost four or five mana each turn, so. That's a good point. He needs to get an efficient Muse. Bow is a draw, but he needs to get something good off his web spinner. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's something. <laughs> One of the few times you like to see the beast. The beast. Yeah, that, that'll compensate for some of the damage loss. No, you know, it'll, you know, it'll make you have to think about a quality here, actually. Yeah, but it's it's something that wasn't in your deck. Now, Koyuki does have the perfect response with a quality. And now, all of a sudden, Amaz has to deal with uh, a 3-3 three, three Finkel Einhorn for his opponent. <laughs> oh, and a true silver, too, so... Alright, this is where... Ooh, it's... Not a good draw from Amaz, and this is where Kiki's gonna start to 
repressure Yamaha's here. Even just the dudes, man, it can be really problematic. Really tempt a monster to use that unleash without the buzzard here. But still sitting at 24, so he could take a couple more rounds of this. Rounds of this brutality. And you know, the longer he waits, the more Koyuki will feel like his opponent's saving for unleash, so. Yeah, you, know, you can kind of make a case for Koyuki probably shouldn't even hero power anymore. Oh, that's true. That's a good point, too. And he's not going to. Oh, he just sits man. on 10 mana. So that's a good yeah. choice. Ma is just really drawing poorly here. Still hasn't been able to get the buzzard. And even the buzzard, just going to be two card draws. But you need something right now. Mm. He's kind of drawing a lot of those death rattle minions piecemeal. Well, if people wanted to ask why isn't the beast played in competitive format when it has great stats, you see <laughs> why. It, the card, it just has a lot of backfire potential. Oh, gosh. Wrong part of the combo. Yeah. yeah. I think he needs to use that eagle horn. Yeah, there you go. He needs to swing at that. Get rid of that guy and Oof. hope for the best. Paladin, you know, again, doesn't have burst. I don't think he has anything that, killed, that does five damage to him in one turn here. No avenging wrath or anything like that. Oh, Ra a Ragnaros. Does he have Ragnaros? He might not have. No, he doesn't have Ragnaros. He only has just Sarah. Oh, and now Amaz nice. officially nice. really can't do anything whatsoever. Yeah. So, seems like this game was just one sided, and the Hunter has been taken down, and Koyuki's mm -hmm. uh, choice to not ban Hunter has panned out in his favor. What? You know, they, they've kind of slightly come together just a, a tiny, tiny bit. But the Harrison Jones is going to do a lot of work, though, for. For Kiyuki. Okay, so it looks like the players are ready, so let's go on to game number four between Kiyuki and Amaz. Amaz trying to stay alive in this best of five series, gonna break out the, the warrior. Alright, well, the warrior can win, it's just you need to get really good draws early on with things like mm -hmm. Acolytes and to minimize the threats. It's the same concept as defeating okay. a shaman, where you right. never let Paladin build the board and leverage their hero power to get really important trades. And then um, on the opposite side, Paladin just has to make sure that it doesn't get behind too much, um, and then that the threats are dealt with pretty easily, which you have so many answers to. You've got double Peacekeeper in your hand already. Yeah, yeah, double Peacekeeper is good. Amaz has, uh, you know, play in his hand too. He's got Armor Smith and he's got the Taskmaster kind of to put that pressure that you were just alluding to, uh, just say to, to um, you know, put something on the board for, for your opponent to deal with, even dudes, right? You know, like, it doesn't feel good to put a dude on the board when you know the armor smith is going to be getting armor from it each and every. What did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> he said you will have all the armor and you will like it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, Belcher's a good good draw now, and it's going to start to curve really nicely into that that uh, turn four with the coin plus turn five, turn six. It's going to be looking good here. Moth has a ton of removal in his hand. I mean, you're okay with this, honestly. The paladin, like, it's not about trying to pressure or go for tempo. Like the big difference between the shaman and versus warrior versus paladin versus warrior is that shaman is on kind of borrowed time. There's like a very weak late game that uh, shaman has and it needs to rely on burst. And in order to get that burst within range, you have to l leverage the board position. Uh, but paladin can take its time. It's like, it doesn't care if you shield slam some threats because in the end, it always has the trump card of a quality consecration. <laughs> And its threats will like outscale late game because of its smaller minions being able to neuter your big threats. So Koyuki is okay with giving his opponent armor and then just taking it slow. There's no rush whatsoever. Right. Well, Kod Kodor got to eat or stampede, so I took out an armor smith. But uh, Belcher's going to be a nice play there for a mod just to kind of start stabilizing his own board, make Koyuki play something, you know, just or at least one of his. Potentially one of his uh, removal cards, but unfortunately for him, he's got Lothab, he's got Belcher. Again, like this turn five and turn six is going to curve really well for him. Let Let's see what he does here. Fiery War Axe kind of presents a little bit of problem because no matter what, he's going to collect value off of, or slight value. I mean, the, the Fiery War Axe has to chew through half a minion already. But um, mm -hmm. you play a Belcher, and then you lose the first body pretty easily. You play the Lotheb, and then yeah. he basically collects a free Kodo off of your Sludge Belcher. So it's not like a win-win scenario here for Koyuki. Yeah, it's got to protect that 3-2. Like it's, Those are good points that you made there. And oh, actually, he's just going to crash it into it anyways. And 
kind of reverse the I guess reverse the position of uh, the board just a second ago. Except that Amos has a has a weapon to help him deal with this. I got a Taskmaster too to help him deal with this if he wants. Yeah, Taskmaster's not yeah. too bad, honestly. Yeah, he could death by two behind it if he what? wants to no. risk the, the possibilities of Harrison. Has he seen I the Harrison? Like he has seen the Harrison, right? He. Oh no, no! I think Amaz had Harrison in his priest deck, so maybe he hasn't seen the Harrison yet. In, That's uh, true, but Palpatine? Harrison is um. I, I, I want to say it's a more common card, but I know a lot of Paladin players like including it, um, as well as Spellbreaker. It's starting to become more common tech, and they're like mm -hmm. taking out Defender of Argus a little bit more liberally, maybe putting in Sengen Shieldmaster instead. Okay, yeah. The right. card that's been um, the most fun for me to see in Paladin decks is Shade of Naxxramas. Oh, because yeah. There's, yeah. It, it, it continues to be like a growing thing and it allows you to pick traits early on. But the funny thing about Shades is that at a certain point, your own equality gives you. So I know. You have that, to that's like have this weird dynamic. That's right. And that's kind of why I've always been. It seemed conflicting to me to use it because if you do use it, you have to use it early, like you said, just to, to get value. But, you know, again, it, all you have to do is grow to like 4 4 and it's like. You know, it's already beyond its its mana value, right? And most of the time, that's when you're playing it, anyways. So that that card generally, like for the most part, gets more value than its uh, than its cost. That's always really really good. Wow. All right, Kyuki, getting his dude army ready, led by the zombie Chow, General Chow. Yeah, like that might not look like a big difference, but zombie Chow actually is just so annoying because um, it like just doubles the power on the board, and he, like he forced out a weapon attack. Like that's like Zombie Chow is not going to get much better value than that, other than an equality and allowing it to buy to trade into a legendary. So this is a really good spot and the exact um, position that Koyuki wanted to be in. Um, so that way his hand and legendaries are just like impossible to deal with over time. Well, that was an interesting trade right there. Uh, he did get the card draw, but he did give up uh, three of his minions there. Worth mm. it though. Worth it. I think it's worth it. Yikes. Amaz was really banking on that death spite to work with Alex Straza and Gromash. Right. That was like a win condition that was set up, and now it's gotten a lot harder all of a sudden because that small little damage, that mm -hmm. four damage, was Amaz's hope to be able to set up for a, a two or three turn kill. He's still got a nice, he's still got a two turn kill here. Like, he's still got a Taskmaster. So. Right, you, you you expect this um this Alex Strauss to be dealt with though. Oh he's sure. okay, so it's exactly okay, yeah, it's true, it's exactly fifteen. That's true. Good point, good point. Okay. But you know, right. that's again, that's Harrison Jones, you know, he can, can be disruptive for the death play setups there. And okay, I guess the question is shield slam. Shield slam or now, not? Now, if you shield slam, you don't have a way to deal with Tyrion. In fact, um, I'm pretty sure if he shield slams this, then Tyrion comes out, but he doesn't, so. Hmm. Still has Brawl. I mean, you can still get some kind of right. lucky mm -hmm. Brawl in the Brawl. Mm -hmm. This is a tough spot, though. Now Maz's board has once again fallen. And. Like, Paladin just keeps hero powering. What are you gonna do against the onslaught of 1 1s? Oh, never mind. He puts that Sludge Belcher. So I guess he's gonna play a little bit quicker. You, you don't always, you don't have forever, but um, eventually you're gonna force out a Brawl. And then when the Brawl comes, and then the 1 1 onslaughts continue. Yeah, I mean, I think I think right now it's, it's the right time to, to kind of put the pedal down, or at least throw down a Belcher like that, because uh, he does have 7 armor. If he doesn't use that shield slam now, you know, he just used that shield block, right? So if he doesn't use it now, he's not going to get much value from it. Uh, so I think Yuki's seen the opportunity to possibly, you know, knock that down even further or just guarantee he's not going to have any armor with an additional minion on the board here too. Because uh, like you said, maybe it is a trigger for Tyrion, right? Like, shield slam, boom, I'm going to play Tyrion, Kyuki. So let's see what... A Maz can do. Is that what plays does a Maz really have? He could draw from the Acolyte if he wanted to. Lothab. Uh, Lothab's not that great, actually. It's not. Yeah. He'd have to 
make two plays into it unless he just trades his guardian oh, straight no. straight up. Like, or he could just get Aldord actually. Well, Lothab means that you're shield slamming Guardian of Kings, or else you have the weak. You have your strongest minion gets immediately dealt with. So if you're not going to Lothab, you're going to play a weak card like Acolyte and then let your armor get shredded so you can't she leverage shield slam. So it looks like you're going to brawl based off the, the conclusion. Yeah, and this is... And the worst case is not two minions greatest. might survive. Oh my god, Guardian King survives and now you have to deal with this anyways. So you have to play Acolyte here, I think. Well, I guess he doesn't yeah, want to because he doesn't want it to get okay. too silvered, but... Ah. Ysera? I dream. Yeah, Ysera, it's a good time for Ysera here, and just continue to put pressure, too. Just throw down as many cards as you can. Now that the Brawl's gone, uh, you know, Warrior's one of those few classes that, that can't deal with the flooding of the board very well. So, you know, that's really Kiki's cue just to start throwing down a bunch of minions here. He's got a Laughing he Sister, too, which surprisingly execute. isn't that bad. Yeah, he needs an Execute here. He can still draw it. It's still in drawing. Whirlwind. Yo, yeah. Oh, a Whirlwind. Oh, car. he doesn't have enough mana. He doesn't have enough mana to do both, at least. Acolyte and Whirlwind. Probably have to do it, though. You probably have to. Oh, okay. He's not going to try to draw for it this turn. Still got a lot of armor and health, so. He can just kind of let it go for a turn. Those dream oh, yeah. cards, Sometimes man. You just gotta let it go. <laughs> and oh yeah. And if you need any more convincing, just watch the duet between Amaz and. Trump. Oh man, I was. Gonna, I, I was have no gonna, time for games. I was gonna reference that too. Oh man, the singing, the singing in this community. Well, let's just say we're thank. They're probably thankful they're good at Hearthstone. <laughs> I don't think they have a backup career as a singer, if I have to be honest. Yeah, that's probably true. Still searching for that execute. Does he have both of them, or just one? I feel like I didn't, we didn't see an earlier execute. So, Maz actually hasn't drawn either of them, which is quite unlucky. And this board is just getting insanely powerful, considering that Brawl's already been used. Oh my god, how, how, how unexpected would it be for a warrior to run two Brawls? <laughs> Be pretty brutal right now. Okay, Sylvanas. Mmm. Wow. Why not? <laughs> Sylvanas ain't bad. Yeah, actually, you could um kill off your opponent, Sylvanas, if you attack into Tyrion, and then um like whirlwind, and then that way Sylvanas can't threaten your Sylvanas, and then in a way your Sylvanas becomes like a. One of the more powerful minions on the board, and you might even steal your opponent's Yasera. Yeah. Then you're afraid of yeah. like Spellbreaker. Yeah. Definitely scared of Spellbreaker, but at this point, I mean, it, that's his only way to change the board, the board state right now. Yeah. Uh, anything he throws down here is just going to be removed potentially by things in his hand. So. Um, he's gonna, well, he's going to go for this play. Yeah, it's gonna remove the Savannas and um, play his own, I believe. Could opt for Karen. Mm, I don't think I like that so much. I have no time for games. Potential of stealing your Sarah could be quite good. At least it would force one of the equalities. Huh. Maybe, actually. You know, with the Ashbringer, probably not, actually. Well, this is kind of like a, a awkward situation, but you can always maximize your potential by just um, hero powering, and then just kind of letting Sylvanas do her thing. I mean, you're pressing for damage. You're in such a good position, and if whatever Sylvanas steals, ultimately you have a quality consecration. Like this is why Paladin's the king yeah, of control, so absolutely. to speak. Mm -hmm. That's the it's the best removal in the game. That that combo, right? It or doesn't matter what the health is. It doesn't matter what the the damage is. In some cases, do it just removes whatever's on the board. The annoying thing is that if Koyuki, if he like, I think I think you don't want to lose Jasera this turn though. So like, as much as you might want to try and. Um, 
as much as you might want to try and uh, establish like board presence and whatnot, like you don't want to like get let Yasera die. So he's gonna actually put nightmare on her and then push for damage and burst and be in a position where he can win without even that was uh, letting Sarah impact him. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. He just. I mean, that Same. was like 20 damage or something like that. That was crazy. Yeah, who says Paladin can't burst, huh? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Man. All right. And well, we see 910 Yuseras, 911 Yuseras today. Crazy. All right, so, what options does Amaz have here? If you steal your opponent's Yuseras, oh, does she actually live for another turn? Oh, oh my god. Never mind. No, she doesn't Forget live. that She doesn't live for another turn. Yeah. Well Looks like Amaz uh, is out. And Koyuki will advance 3-1 yeah. after a well-played series. Yeah, that Paladin, man. His Paladin, it's fitting. Fitting for him to win with his Paladin. And it's a 3-0-ing uh, you know, Amaz, right? That that Paladin. So, uh, uh, yeah, Koyuki advances. He's going to be playing Nymph tomorrow. Gonna be, I think he's going to be leading the day off tomorrow. So that should be a, a good matchup.